What's up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the all new 2020 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport, courtesy of Hanover Volkswagen in Hanover, PA. And so I of course had to check this one out with this being an all new model from Volkswagen for 2020. Looks absolutely amazing. Very reminiscent of the Audi Q8 in my opinion. We'll get more into the design later, but of course, Volkswagen had to jump into this segment because the Atlas itself sold over 80,000 units in 2019. That's a huge success. And this essentially is the two-row version of the three-row Atlas. You will find a little more space in the rear seats there, I have a feeling. So we'll be testing that out a little bit later, of course. And this is going to be competing with vehicles like the Honda Passport, Nissan Murano, and the Ford Edge, except it's going to be bigger than all three of those. And so in this video, we'll be testing out everything about this one, going over everything about the new 2020. Atlas Cross Sports. So what do you say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2020 Atlas Cross Sport. First one being the S and actually the one we have today, starting at $30,545. Then you have the SE for $33,945. SE with technology for $35,945. SE Technology V6 for $39,245. SEL $41,445, SEL V6 for $43,245, and lastly, the SEL R-Line V6 going for $44,945. And so all of those trim levels, with the exception of the first three, do come standard with Volkswagen's four-motion all-wheel drive system. For the first three, it comes standard with a front-wheel drive configuration, but you can add all-wheel drive to those three trim levels. And if you wanted to go ahead and do that, simply add $1,900 to any of those three prices there but of course as I alluded to in the trim levels there are actually two different engine setups for the Atlas Cross Sport first one being the one we have today a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 235 horsepower at 4500 rpm 258 pound feet of torque available at 1600 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic giving you MPG numbers coming in at 21 in the city 24 highway for the front wheel drive 18 in the city 20 three on the highway for the all-wheel drive and this one will actually take regular unleaded fuel aka 87 octane save you a little bit of money there but so then the other engine setup is going to be a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated v6 this one puts out 276 horsepower at 6400 rpm 266 pound feet of torque available at 3600 rpm power sent to all four wheels through this engine setup it is just the four motion all-wheel drive system there through an eight-speed automatic mpg numbers for this one come in at 16 in the city 22 on the highway but still taking regular unleaded fuel that's definitely a plus there too so before we do any kind of acceleration test in the atlas cross sport i did want to mention there is a circular dial directly behind the shifter for drive modes and not only on-road drive modes but also off-road drive modes as well and so touching on the on-road drive modes there is eco normal and sport it's going to adjust things like the throttle response shift points and steering sensitivity and then the off-road drive modes are going to include off-road custom off-road and snow and essentially those are going to adjust the stability control system to best adapt to different conditions that you would happen to be driving in so really a little something for everybody there so that's pretty cool and by the way to actually go ahead and adjust those driving modes you turn it to the left or the right if you wanted to adjust the off-road driving modes and then you simply just press down in the middle of that circular dial and that is going to adjust the on-road driving modes in case anybody was curious about that and so we now having gone over all of the specs i do believe you guys know what time it is let's go ahead and find it straight away put this thing to the test and let's see how quickly we can get the new 2020 volkswagen atlas cross sport here up to speed all right you guys coming up to a red light here i think we have a straightaway let's uh let's do this eh, it's okay definitely not going to be as powerful as the naturally aspirated v6 that you can go with but it'll do the trick certainly not going to have any issues with merging onto the highway that acceleration is 
just okay. It'll do the trick in this one. <laughs> so, but anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So, of course, as expected, you will find power-assisted four-wheel disc brakes. Up front, you're going to get 13.2-inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.2-inch rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, that has certainly been on point so far in my short test drive today. There is no brake pedal delay. Actually, kind of on the firm side, which is a good thing. and instantly brings you to a stop in this one, so that's a huge plus. Touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension with the stabilizer bar. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, again with the stabilizer bar. As far as the steering feel goes in that sport mode, it is definitely on point. Not the heaviest thing in the world, but you wouldn't expect that out of an SUV like this, but it is certainly a heavier weighted steering feel when in that sport mode, because again, the driving modes do adjust the steering feel, so that is definitely a huge plus if you are one that likes that heavier steering feel like me, but if you don't, don't put it in sport mode. Really gives you the best of both worlds there, but I do like the steering feel, I will say that. Ride quality has been perfectly fine in my short test drive today, so once again on point. Cabin noise, same thing, no issues with exterior wind noises coming into the cabin, so that is definitely fine as well. Here's one thing though, when it comes to visibility, of course when you have an awesome looking SUV like the Atlas Cross Sport with the tapered roof line, that is gonna sacrifice visibility ever so slightly. And so having said that, it is not going to be as good as the standard three row Atlas, but it should do the trick. All I'm saying is it is not as good as the standard Atlas and those second row headrests do kind of protrude up a decent bit when you already have slightly less visibility than you're used to in an SUV. So visibility, if anything, is going to be the trade-off for this one just because you have such a nice design to it. So I have to say that. But on the plus side, the Atlas Crossboard does come with rain sensing windshield wipers for all trim levels, even this base S trim that we have today. So that's brilliant. That essentially is going to be when the Atlas Cross Sport automatically turns on the windshield wipers when it detects any kind of mist or rainfall. So it's one last thing you have to worry about. Kind of like automatic headlights, you can better focus more on your attention on the actual drive. So that is a huge plus as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the amazing design of the new 2020 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport. All right, and here she is, you guys, the 2020 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport, looking very similar to the elegant looks of the Audi Q8, which is most definitely a good thing. And it makes sense with Audi being Volkswagen's big brother, essentially, so that is definitely a good thing. But anyways, let's go ahead and make our way up front of the Cross Sport here. And so to the sides, you will find LED headlights with LED daytime running lights coming standard on all trim levels. Of course, with those headlights, they also come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out, they will turn on automatically for for you there so you never have to worry about that adaptive front lighting system coming standard with the sel trim levels and essentially what that is is when you're going around a bend at night those headlights will swivel based on your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you don't go running into any deer or squirrels or anything like that chrome horizontal bars coming standard on that front grille and that is for all trim levels and that's actually kind of rare that the front grille is the exact same for all trim levels so i don't know i can i think that's kind of a good thing especially if you go with the s trim level like we have here today it's going to look just as good essentially but as far as the front bumper down below that is actually going to be the same with the exception of the r line that is going to give you a much more aggressive style front bumper but even if you don't go with that, I do like the functional air vents found in the bottom corners of that front bumper, directing air around the wheel and tire combination, little better aerodynamics there. So in my opinion, this front bumper definitely looks plenty good on this base S trim level that we do have here today. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the Atlas Cross Sport. And so starting up top here, silver roof rails coming standard for all trim levels. Also chrome belt line molding, all trim levels again, rear privacy glass coming standard once again. Accenting on those front doors slash fenders, it kind of ties together there, but that is gonna come standard in all trims too, actually. And what that accenting actually says is cross sport. So it's gonna tell you that this is the Atlas cross sport as opposed to your standard Atlas. And you're gonna get some R-line badging if 
you want with the R line trim level in that particular place as well. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors and they will come heated actually for all trim levels across the board. So that's a huge plus. And not only that, you will get LED integrated turret signals as well. And that of course is what you were looking at right now on our base S trim level today. So that is definitely a huge plus. Usually integrated turret signals come standard on upper trim levels with other manufacturers, but not with Volkswagen. So well done Volkswagen there. If you wanted memory settings for this side mirrors, go with one of the SEL trim levels. Then taking a look down at the wheel setup, they are going to differ quite substantially depending upon the trim level that you go with. 18 inch alloy wheels coming with the S and SE trim levels, 20 inch alloy wheels coming with the SE with technology and up with the exception of the R line because the R line is going to give you 21 inch machined alloy wheels. So a bunch of different wheel setups dependent upon the trim level. I did want to also mention there are aluminum side steps available as an option for $660 if you wanted to go that route. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the Atlas Crossport. First thing I always like to mention, you do have a gloss black shark fin antenna up top, just behind that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just underneath of that rear window wiper, of course. Just underneath of that, you have a chrome horizontal bar with Atlas lettering spelled out horizontally. That looks pretty darn cool. And if you went with the four motion all wheel drive configuration, you will get some badging in the lower right hand corner of that tailgate for that. And so, but then the last thing I always like to mention when we are around back and probably the one room for improvement, I would say, as far as exterior looks go, when it comes to the exhaust, there is dual exhaust outlets. They are pointed towards the ground and they are tucked away where you cannot see them. Although the Atlas Crossport kind of imitates dual exhaust outlets with those chrome surrounds towards the bottom of that rear bumper, but they are not actually exhaust outlets. So if it were me, I would go ahead and expose them, maybe make some chrome exhaust outlets to make it look a little better. That is probably my one little room for improvement there because it just looks essentially like this car doesn't have an exhaust system right now. But either way, you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are round back, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, there is a button on the key fob. If you like, simply just press that. There is also, of course, a button on the lift gate itself, but either way is perfectly fine. Manual lift gate is going to come with the S trim level that we have today. You will get a power lift gate for the SE trim level and a hands free lift gate with any of the SEL trim levels. So, that's how that's going to be configured. Once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 40.3 cubic feet behind that second row. If that was not enough space, there is a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down bumping that cubic feetness up to 77.8 quite a bit of space there actually for a two row suv and that's what i was talking about earlier it is more space than some of its competitors there you will find cargo lighting back there there is a 12 volt power outlet there is kind of in floor storage i guess you could call it that essentially where your spare tire is you could of course probably store some things in there if you wanted to make your way up to the rear leg room this is where the atlas cross sport really shines so when you get rid of the third row you essentially allow yourself more second row legroom so since this is only a two row rear legroom is going to come in at 40.4 inches for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there plenty of space for me for comparison if you were to go with the three row standard atlas that second row legroom is going to come in at 37.6 inches so quite a bit more actually comparing it to that standard atlas in the atlas cross sport so if you did not need that third row this may indeed be the better pick for you quite honestly and of course those rear passengers will find rear ventilation for all trim levels also a rear center armrest with cup holders the only need for improvement in the second row that i found with some rear window sunshades would be kind of cool didn't have to be on all trim levels maybe just the upper trim levels but i wouldn't have minded seeing some rear window sunshades back there make your own way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seats for the s trim level the se trim level is actually going to add quite a bit vtex leatherette seating heated front seats a 10-way power driver's seat with power lumbar so a good bit added there 
SEL trim level adds memory settings. And another thing I found kind of interesting, unfortunately there's no ventilated seats available for the Atlas Cross Sport, so wouldn't have minded seeing that too. But take a look at the steering wheel. This is actually a big win for me. I love the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the SE trim level and up. Although we do have the urethane steering wheel today because we do have the S trim level, but I like the style of the Volkswagen logo. That is kind of a new design compared to a lot of the other Volkswagens that I've reviewed in the past. It is a flat bottom and the 10 and 2 grips are definitely a little thicker than what I'm used to with other Volkswagens. So I do really like the steering wheel. So that's a big plus for me there. To take a look at the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. Again, it is going to differ substantially amongst the trim levels. You will get keyless entry with a push button start for the SE trim level and up. Although with the S trim level that we have today, we do have that old school turn key ignition. So it is a switchblade key. So that's going to be how I actually start this one up. But remote start is actually going to come with the SE and technology trim level and up. So that is how you're going to get all that. But all I'm going to do now is simply put my foot on the brake and go ahead and turn the key. <laughs> and so, but then once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center. All of this being the standard setup, you can control what is on that smaller digital display by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there. However, if you're thinking to yourself, how do I get the Volkswagen digital cockpit? You're gonna have to go with one of the SEL trim levels and that is an amazing dash. Let me tell you guys, amazing gauge setup. That is probably the one you're gonna want because it kind of borrows a lot of the cues from Audi's virtual cockpit. You can make the gauges smaller or larger. I've played around with them before. It's an amazing gauge setup, so I would definitely recommend that. But make your way to overall interior quality. Panoramic sunroof coming standard with the R-Line. It is optional for the SE trims and it comes standard on the SEL trim levels. So of course we don't have that one today. Dual zone climate control coming with the SE trim level and up. Wireless phone charger with the SE trim level and up. And so like I keep mentioning, we do have the base trim level, the base S trim level today. So one of the things I really do like in the base trim level here is there is LED interior lighting everywhere, whether it be the back or the front. Usually you find halogen bulbs, but you do have LEDs in this, in this base trim level. That's definitely nice. Just above the infotainment display, there is a rubberized storage area. So things don't slide around if you were to go off road, kind of like we are right now. So that is pretty nice that that's there. I like the aluminum trim design that's found just above the the passenger side glove box that continues onto the door so it ties together pretty nicely there. Opening up the passenger side glove box it is definitely a decent size glove box there. You do have a separate area up top for the owner's manual and really you can store of course whatever you want in that upper area there. Just in front of the shifter you have a 12 volt power outlet, a couple of phone hookups there. To the side of the shifter you have dual cup holders of course, electromechanical parking brake and a pretty decent sized center armrest with a decent amount of storage in there. And I like the contrast white stitching on that center armrest rust as well. But quite honestly, a pretty basic setup for the S trim level. Other trim levels are going to give you USB charging ports, things like that. But anyways, since I mentioned it, let's go ahead and make our way now to the tech display on the Atlas Cross Sport. Six and a half inch color touchscreen display coming standard with the S trim level that we have today. Eight inch color touchscreen display coming standard with the SE trim level and up. And so either way you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, but perhaps the best part about this base S trim level that we have today Android Auto and Apple CarPlay coming standard. That's standard across the board for every single trim level. A lot of other manufacturers leave it out on the base trim levels of their SUVs, but not Volkswagen. I love that. So therefore, all I need to do is hook my smartphone up to the vehicle, and I will have free navigation displayed up on this screen, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs, of course. All that is a huge plus for me, at least. Factory navigation system coming with the SEL trim levels. You can also check out your fuel prices and some weather information up there. I always like that with Volkswagens and of course your radio settings and by the way when it comes to the sound system you will find a six speaker sound system across the board for every single trim level of the Atlas Cross Sports so having said that I do believe you guys know what we have to do next let's turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out this six speaker sound system that we do indeed have here today <laughs> It's a basic sound system, what can I say? For the size of it, it's not bad. It's certainly not gonna take you to a different world or anything like that. It's all right, it'll get the job done for the Atlas Cross Sport. And so the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you put this one in reverse, you of course will find a rear view camera for all trim levels, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. 
This is a start front side and side curtain airbags will come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also standard back there, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, auto dimming rear view mirror. It's all pretty basic stuff, but Atlas Crossboard actually does pretty good with the advanced safety features. And so for all trim levels, you're actually going to get a forward collision warning system with autonomous emergency braking, pedestrian monitoring, and a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert. That's those little car indicators found in the side mirrors. A lot of times that's going to be found on upper trim levels of other manufacturers, but it is standard on the base S trim level that we have today. So I do love that. SE with technology package adds park distance control and the SE L trim levels are going to add to that traffic sign detection and traffic jam assist as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the 2020 Atlas Cross Sport, I do like the style. I absolutely love the design of this. It does look a lot like the Audi Q8, which is definitely a good thing. The design was well done here. More second row legroom than the three row Atlas. That's definitely a big plus as well. It's kind of so-so to drive, so nothing that really blows me away. Perhaps if we had the v6 today that might change my opinion of that and when comparing it to some of its competitors yes it is going to have more space than a lot of the other vehicles in its segment so if it's space that you were looking for in this particular segment this is definitely the way to go but having said that some of the other competitors do offer you a little bit more like the kia telluride like the hyundai palisade and technically although they're three row suvs for the same price point you could just fold down the third row and you have a two row with essentially the same rear legroom and a little bit more cargo space so ultimately then it comes down to the design but having said all of that I really don't think Volkswagen is going to have any issues selling this thing in the U.S. It is an absolutely amazing design plus you get a pretty stellar warranty still with Volkswagen and two years of complimentary maintenance which a lot of other manufacturers do not do so that is a big plus too but that about rounds out this review you guys feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after after all, feel free to pick up some merch below the video if you want. And I do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.